You're watching Biz Lounge, and we're in conversation with Dr. Kamal Sharma of Lupin. And now we'll take a look at how he took charge of a family-run business and helped turn it into one of the largest pharma companies in the country. For 62-year-old Kamal Kumar Sharma, running a business like Lupin has been quite a journey. It's been almost a decade that Dr. Sharma took over the reins of the company and pulled it out of the troubled times and made it into an international brand. Over time, I've learned that uh, it needs a lot of self-discipline uh, to be a, a smart and good leader. Uh, often, uh, a leader should be ready to sacrifice a lot. Today, Dr. Sharma is looked at as a people's person across the organization. Dr. Sharma is, uh, you know, as a CEO, is a statesman among CEOs. And this is something that struck me uh, even when I actually first met with him. He's an extremely hands-on leader. I mean, he has this amazing ability to understand what we are working against, the larger environment and related to the vision of the company, how we're going to actually put the blocks together. He engages with us uh, both on a personal front as well as on the commercial yeah. front. So um, he's a good mixture of both, uh, you know, getting down to the uh, nitty gritties. You know, so he's the annual direction that one should be. At the same time, he's able to straddle across the macro world as well. He's a great connoisseur for food and, uh, and he oh. loves his wine. Uh, there's very little, little about wine and, and whiskies that he does not know. We've travelled a lot together and uh, I think in all our travels, one thing which is uh, there every time is he'll call at 6 o'clock in the morning and say let's go for a jog or to the gym. His, his love for cooking, his love for the finer things in life, his ability to appreciate culture and art. I mean his, his take on food, his take on paintings and art, that's very close to the person he is. He's extremely creative. Considering the organization was going through a bit of a tough time, were there any major organizational or cultural changes that you had to lead? We certainly set uh, the values for the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, we defined six values uh, at that time and uh, we propagated and instituted them in our behavior. So uh, if there was respect for people, working together, customer orientation, integrity, entrepreneurship, superior performance. Mm -hmm. So those were the six values which were actually uh, devised in a group discussion. Mm -hmm. And as you know, this is an iterative process mm -hmm. because uh, initially everybody is supposed to write what he thinks of values as they occur to him or her on a flip chart. Mm -hmm. Then you have this plethora of things which are then converged into one definition because some 200 uh, synonyms for the same yeah. attribute. You know? mm -hmm. The idea of doing that was to bring everybody on a common platform of thinking. Yeah. That, look, this is how we are going to run the business. Mm -hmm. These are the values that are going to drive us. Yeah. And which of the many business successes that you've accomplished under your tenure would you say that you're most proud of? Um, I, I think I'm proud of uh, the way the company has come up. Mm -hmm. Today we are the ninth largest uh, global generic company by market capitalization. Mm -hmm. uh, our market cap is $5 billion. We are the 13th largest by revenue. Mm -hmm. okay. So we, we can count ourselves in global league uh, where we were nowhere in the reckoning uh, 10 years ago. Uh, 10 years ago, maybe our market cap was uh, $200 million. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. Our revenue was $250 million. You know. So both on growth in, in top line and bottom line, mm -hmm. in terms of valuation of the company, in terms of happiness quotient of the people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because uh, I'm, I'm very proud to say that we haven't had great deal of attrition mm -hmm. at the senior and the top level. Mm -hmm. You also teach IIT students in yes, your free time. Yes. What do you teach? Uh, so I teach a program on... Uh, uh, Technology forecasting, which is uh, uh, future of technology. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I teach a program on leadership and vision. Mm -hmm. um, I teach another program, which is uh, effectiveness skills uh, for leadership. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, my hobby. I enjoy this. What uh, do you enjoy about it? 
One I enjoy about it is my interaction with the young people. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that extremely uh, energy giving and uh, extremely rewarding mm -hmm. in terms of sharing some of your experience with them mm -hmm. and learning a great deal from them, from their young uh, bubbly minds, you know, a new way of thinking. The second thing which it does is that it keeps your uh, intellectual uh, churning on. Mm -hmm. You don't get, you know, kind of buffeted with just common way of doing business morning, evening, you know. Okay. It takes you uh, tangentially to another world at times. Mm -hmm. So so there you're dealing with these young kids of 25, 26 years old. Mm -hmm. You're sharing experience. You're, you're, for every one hour that I spend with them, uh, I spend five to six hours in the library mm. because I obviously would like to deal with the most contemporary part of the knowledge. Prior to joining Lupin, what would you say was your most memorable work experience? This was my first job as a works manager. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so, what was the name of the company? Metro Bay itself. Mm -hmm. uh, this also happened to be in 1977 when there was an emergency declared by Indira Gandhi mm -hmm. in 1975, mm -hmm. which lasted for two years. Mm -hmm. And during that two years, uh, all the labor activity was uh, suppressed. Uh, all the opposition leaders were put in the jail. Mm -hmm. right? So 77 April, when I took this assignment, the emergency was lifted. Mm -hmm. The labor situation was electric. They were belligerent. And here I was, a 28-year-old works manager. My six people reported to me. And the youngest of the six was 36 years old. So I must say that somewhere inside me, I, I was scared because they were throwing stones at my office. They were doing all kind of nonsense. They would put, uh, you know, this grass which gives you itch. Oh. Yeah, and they'll put it on the on the chair where you sit. So I used to wear half sleeve shirt those days in the summer. So I started wearing full sleeve shirts. And so it was. Uh, they made my effigy. But I don't think there can be a better example than this rough and tough environment, which yeah. you know I could bring to order. Mm -hmm. uh, through uh, this whole process of talking to people, sharing a philosophy, and and leading them into believing that if they followed the philosophy, it'll be in their best interest. It also uh, graduated me to much higher levels of uh, you know leadership uh, in terms of people leadership, bringing in change. Quite an experience. Huh? <laughs> it was quite yeah. an experience. Scary at times. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Sharma, we have to head to another quick break here. But stay with us for more. We'll be right back.